Great White mysteriously vanished from satellites. Shark researchers have been diligently working for years to dispel shark prejudices largely attributed to media such as Jaws and Shark Week. Sharks are actually incredibly predictable beasts that have been swimming in our midst since ancient times. They are creatures of habit who frequent the same feeding grounds, are incredibly sensitive to temperature changes in their environment and follow the same migratory patterns every year, meaning that they are always among us but are rarely seen as they adhere closely to their predictable routines. Scientists hoped that by tracking and publicizing the movements of the more stereotyped members of the species, they could help to fix the reputation of sharks in the public eye. One shark was Catherine, who was one of the largest great white sharks in the North Atlantic at over 4 meters long and well over 1,000 kilograms at the time she was tagged with the GPS satellite on August 20, 2013. Her whereabouts being constantly broadcast to the public as she cruised the coasts of Florida made her an instant celebrity. At one point, she even had a Twitter account with 61,000 avid followers and fans all along the coast hoping to catch sight of her as she passed. She truly appeared to be the ambassador that researchers had hoped for, as the public delighted in sightings of Catherine and followed her live stream tracking updates carefully. However, Tragedy struck when, on May 12, 2019, Catherine's location was pinged off the South Carolina coast and then there was satellite silence, leaving her fans to wonder what had become of the massive great white shark. The satellite only pings when the shark's dorsal fin breaks the surface and great whites can go months without ever seeing the light of day, yet months passed and there was still no sign of beloved Catherine. Until, amazingly, Almost a year later, at the end of March, a faint ping reached satellites off the coast of Virginia. Believing it to be a ghost ping, researchers disregarded it until April, when three pings within quick succession proved without a doubt that Catherine was indeed back and believed to be bigger than ever. Since she was not a full-grown adult at the time of her disappearance, researchers estimate that Catherine will likely put on around 450 kilograms, one thing that is less certain is where exactly Catherine went during her extended hiatus. One theory blames the interruption on biofouling, an accumulation of algae, mussels and other aquatic detritus that could have blocked the signal on the antennae and only recently worked its way free. However, if this were the case, the battery on her tracker was only supposed to last five years and it is still pinging satellites after seven. So it is somewhat amazing that we were even able to hear from Catherine again. Regardless of how she managed to disappear, researchers are happy to see her again, and as great white sharks can live up to 75 years, hoping we can follow her movements and learn more about the habits of these ocean predators for many years to come. Paul Nabron Dolman Regarded as the National Monument of Ireland, the Pulnabron Dolmen is an ancient standing structure dated to go as far back in creation as 3800 BC. Located in an area known as the Burren, of which is a strange region of landscape in Ireland that researchers are still trying to research and understand to this day, the Pulnabron Dolmen is at the centre of interesting theories surrounding ancient Neolithic people once inhabiting the region and creating burial structures for their recently deceased. Recent theory surrounding the burial grounds holds the sentiment that the current standing Pulna Bron Dolmen looks entirely different to its original design before degradation occurred over the past 6,000 years. Archaeologists believe that the original structure would have been semi-buried in soil surrounding the structure and contain a large number of stacked rocks on top of the dolmen to allow it to be seen for quite a distance in every direction. The presence of the Pulnabron dolmen itself also lends substantial evidence to the theory that the Burrens were home to Neolithic people more than 6,000 years in the past. Further research into the Burrens themselves show that unlike anywhere else in Ireland, the Burrens has an unusual temperature and climate when compared to other locations in Western Ireland allowing the area to have one of the longest growing seasons in both Ireland and Britain, as well as providing a diverse location for rich plant growth and harvesting all throughout the area. This climate would have proven to be incredibly advantageous to any people wishing to build a civilization with the first step of agriculture being established.
Paracas Candelabra, Peru. Found on the northern face of Paracas Peninsula in Peru, the Paracas Candelabra is a mysterious prehistoric geoglyph. It is a strange design made from stones cut two feet into the soil. The geoglyph is 595 feet tall, and it can be easily seen from a distance of more than 19 kilometers from sea. The shape of Paracas Candelabra is quite mysterious, and it is quite difficult to describe. It somewhat looks like a cactus plant. However, some people describe it as a three-branched candlestick, and therefore it has been named Candelabra. The design has a single stem at the bottom. As it moves up, it splits into three branches. The middle branch is the tallest, and the other two branches are equal in length. Each of the three branches further split at the ends. Archaeologists are not quite sure about its true origins. However, they have found some pottery buried near this geoglyph. Experts carried out radiocarbon analysis of the pottery and determined that it was made by the Paracas people in 200 BCE. However, no connection could be established between the discovered pottery and the mysterious geoglyph. There are a number of theories about Paracas Candelabra. Some people believe that it was a unique sign made by sailors so that they were able to recognize the area from sea. Others say that it was a Freemasonry symbol made by the Freemasons, indicating that the area is one of the major hubs of Freemasonry in the world. Another popular belief is that it represents the Mesoamerican world tree, one of the motifs in folklore. A researcher named Tony Morrison did extensive research on Paracas Candelabra. He met and interviewed many local people to know more about the mysterious geoglyph. During his research, one of the people he interviewed was Duncan Masson, a local resident of the area. Masson told Morrison that he had heard first-hand accounts of Paracas Candelabra from the people who lived during the early 19th century. These accounts tell that Paracas Candelabra was made by a group of sailors over a period of time. These sailors had plenty of free time during layover, and they kept themselves busy by carving this huge geoglyph. Later on, it was simply used as a signal for sailors. The fact that the Paracas coastline has been a major stopping point for sailors for many centuries supports Morrison's explanation for the geoglyph. The last true isolationist people. As is already well known, the Sentinelese people are the last isolationist people in the entire world. This doesn't mean, however, that there has been absolutely no contact with the outside world in the past as there has been a handful of incidents in the past couple of hundred years to help give an insight as to the people and their condition. Back in 1867, an Indian merchant ship had crash-landed on the shores near North Sentinel Island due to the massive and impossible to navigate reefs in the region. The survivor accounts detailed that on the third day of being on the island, the group was attacked by members of the Sentinelese tribe as they were described as perfectly naked with short hair and red painted noses and were opening their mouths and making strange and unintelligible noises. This led people to realize that perhaps the language of the Sentinelese tribe was something much older than anything previously heard as the noises were not common to that of any other languages in the world. Interestingly enough, this theory was confirmed when on-speaking people from other Andaman islands nearby were brought along to help translate but claimed that the language spoken by the North Sentinelese was completely unintelligible and seemed to have no connection with their Andamanese language. This led to the very early realization that the people of the North Sentinelese island were much older than any other civilization or group of people anywhere in the world, as they did not have sounds common to that of Latin, Cyrillic, Romance, or any other form of popular and unpopular languages previously existing. Additionally, their hostile attitudes towards newcomers and their inability to find a connection between their language and others helped to contribute to their isolationist philosophy as an uncontacted tribe. Despite the tribe's primitive conditions, it has been discovered that the North Sentinelese are incredibly healthy and suffer from no genetic defects of any kind, as well as being of a much better health and condition compared to the average world population. This has been completely unexplainable as to modern researchers' tribes from other areas found around the world usually begin to suffer from genetic defects caused by inbreeding that lead to deteriorating factors in regards to health and longevity. 
This mystery was only made all the more strange when back in 2004, a large tsunami had struck the island that many believed had completely wiped out the Sentinelese people. Not only did the Sentinelese people survive, but despite a small population surviving, still no genetic defects were found after repopulation and growing numbers from the small families. This could very well mean that unlike humans of the modern day, the Sentinelese people have only dominant traits that do not allow the recessive alleles to surface that can cause birth defects or genetic defects of any kind, making them stronger, healthier and more capable to survive much harsher conditions than modern humans. This could also help to explain why the Homo sapiens species came from a theoretical Adam and Eve, as recessive negative traits had not yet existed in the genus essentially meaning that early humans could have been far more advanced than humans of the modern era in nearly all regards. Given the fact that the Sentinelese people were capable of recovering from a single family, it could very well mean that their people hold the secrets to healthy genetic traits and information completely lost to thousands of years of recessive alleles and mutations in the world population. Scientists announce a new form of DNA, named Hachimoji DNA. DNA, which is the building block of life, consists of four nucleotides. Each nucleotide contains a letter-labeled base, and these nucleotides are arranged in a double helix structure. The four letters or bases of DNA form pairs, and the arrangement of these pairs creates the genetic instructions. Since the identification of the structure of DNA in 1953, Researchers had wondered if it was possible for a DNA with different structure and different number of pairs to be able to give birth to life. In February 2019, researchers were finally able to expand the genetic alphabet and create a synthetic DNA with eight letters instead of four. This synthetic DNA is known as Hachimoji DNA. Researchers believe that the creation of this advanced DNA has opened many new possibilities for medical research and it can potentially enhance data storage capabilities. The interdisciplinary team of scientists worked under Steve Benner, who is a synthetic biologist. They made the synthetic DNA from scratch. This synthetic DNA with custom programming can provide the instructions that don't exist in nature. For now, scientists have only used synthetic DNA for novel purposes, such as creating new perfume scents. But in the near future, they plan to use the Hachimoji DNA for different medical purposes. One of the potential medical uses of this new DNA can be creating an enzyme that could break down gluten and provide treatment for celiac disease. According to a press release issued by NASA, which was one of the organizations funding the study, the creation of Hachimoji DNA has opened new possibilities in the search for extraterrestrial life. This discovery has led the scientists to now believe that it is possible for extraterrestrial life to have entirely different building blocks than that of life on Earth.